Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Friday, the 25th day of March, 2022. Um, it is Friday, the third week of Lent, but more importantly today, because it's the 25th day of March, nine months before Christmas Day, the 25th of December, uh, we celebrate the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord to Mary. Um, and so our third and final of the great feast solemnities uh, that can also mark our journey through the season of Lent, uh, we experience today on this Friday. Uh, so it is a parish uh, retreat day for the parish staff, um, I'm not. So, uh, so I don't go to it, but I did Mass. I just got out of Mass uh, today. So it was very nice to get to do Mass uh, a couple of times. So, um, uh, But coming to you from what I think is the earliest of the courtyards, the first of our courtyards. There are many courtyards here on our campus of St. Francis of Assisi. This might be the earliest because right behind me over here is um, the structure that, that uh, was the first church of St. Francis of Assisi, again, fronting Leesville Road right, right past there. Um, on this side, um, is our uh, preschool, one of our sides of our preschool, uh, St. Elizabeth Hall, uh, right over here. Uh, but uh, in this courtyard, it's so beautiful because our white dogwood has come into bloom. And over here, our uh, red dogwood is just beginning to bloom. Um, the Perini Fountain is behind me. It does not have any water in it, so it's very nice. It's got to be cleaned. Uh, but uh, the Perini Fountain, which marks uh, this courtyard as being a wonderful kind of quiet uh, place of contemplation, solitude, um, and just uh, conversation uh, with many uh, people who pass by uh, the, the their way on this on this campus of St. Francis. Um, so um, special readings, three of them for uh, the Annunciation. Uh, the Gospel being the Annunciation of Gabriel to Mary that she will bear the uh, that she will bear the Christ. Um, again, what, uh, what what does it mean? You know, to, to celebrate uh, the Annunciation within uh, the season of Lent, and especially on this day on which uh, you know Pope Francis wants us to consecrate Russia and the Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So a number of things that are happening today. Some of them uh, consistent and, and and correlative with each other. Some of them n not not so much. We have to be kind of careful what we're doing. So with the Annunciation during Lent, again, it's because of what God does in the fullness of time, not when everything is well. To put together and satisfactory, but especially um, uh, when, when things are worse, when things are at their most dire, when things are just not really what they should be, God intervenes, even though we may think that they are at, the, at their best and they, and they are in the best places possible, God intervenes. Um, and God intervenes at a time where the fullness of God's intervention will take root um, and bear fruit and you know, you know, you know cause um, a transformation of, of our human history and humankind. That is what the Annunciation does. Um, that is what the resurrection will do. Do. That is what Christ's passion and his teachings and his earthly life do, bring to fullness in time uh, the will and the purpose of God in this creation that God has put into motion and that God continues to sustain with loving care. Um, we are called to recognize God's hand in all of this. We are also called uh, to recognize the power of what it means to announce to others uh, what it is that God does, especially in times and places in which things seem darkest, direst, most uh, dreadful and whatever it is, to see God's hand at work and to see God guiding us, you know, through everything that we experience with love, with mercy, uh, with power and with strength. Um, that is our witness. Um, and so we remember on the on this day of the Annunciation, how Mary took up that mantle of witness um, and that and then how we are also given that mantle of witness to embrace ourselves so that we do not fall into despair, into hopelessness, but recognize always that with God, there is hope. There is abundant hope. There is never ending, never failing hope for us. Um on this day in which we are supposed to consecrate to the immaculate heart of Mary, Russia and Ukraine, again, to be careful, uh, because it comes out of a time in our history when, again, an atheistic political system, you know, w was suppressing active participation. It wasn't suppressing the faith. Uh, Russia is orthodoxy. Russia has always been orthodoxy, whether in secret or in public. Um, and so to be careful that we are not trying to convert Russia to Catholicism. That is not what this is about, uh, although it was about this when we did this in the 30s, 40s and 50s. Um, but this is very different. We are looking for peace, always peace, but a peace that we cannot give ourselves, a peace that can only come from God. And do we dare, you know, to pray to God for that kind of peace? And do we dare to see and to witness and to announce that peace when and where we see it? challenge always of being a believer in this world, the challenge of always being a person who embraces the journey of Lent from death to life. May we, may we see the fruit and the glory of life as we continue to journey through our own lens and through our own uh, troubles and through our own difficulties in life. And may our witness give faith and hope to those who are in desperate need of a witness to faith, hope, and love. And may the Lord give you his peace.